suddenly we found ourselves having to give what seemed like a really normal kid uh, Adderall in the morning and then a tranquilizer at night. And it was just seemed like even our, our recent foster daughter is on some strong medication. And you go to the doctor and um, and you're like, look, I make all these, mo look, I'm not you know, just some guy with opinions. I, I actually tour universities talking about drugs and I try to explain who I am and all this. And they're like, ah, oh, that's really interesting. And, and I really think she's taking too much of this medication and I got flow charts and videos and all this. That's so very interesting, Mr. Booth. Like, can can see you next month. When you're a foster parent, and most people are foster parents for the money. Like you're not, you know, 90, 95% of all the foster families out there, they're doing it for money. That's okay, I mean, you got a lot of people out there, they need money, they take a kid in, they take a couple of kids in. Uh, the state pays them you know, anywhere from like maybe $700 a month up to a couple thousand dollars a month. But if, what happens is, is that the more problems that can be assigned to that child, the more money you get paid. And the more money all the case workers make, the more social workers there are, it just all stacks up. And so there's just more profit in being able to say like little Tommy here, he's got like this stack of problems. He, little, little, little Billy here, he needs like 10 different medications. He, oh, he threw a shoe at me. He's like, he, he's insane. He, he's schizophrenic. And, even if the and they do it. No, they'll, they'll put some of these kids on a cocktail, an, an insane cocktail of antidepressants, of ADHD, of, of just a Y to Z. And most of these drugs, long-term effect, do end up like causing addiction and different problems. So you, you grow up taking Adderall every day, you're probably gonna be more prone to like having a problem with speed or amphetamines. It, it kind of carves a place out in your brain at that early age. I mean, anytime a drug has a, has a warning of may cause suicidal thoughts, I mean, I, I think that's, that's no different than um, saying may cause you to go on a murdering rampage. Because if I'm willing to commit suicide, I'm gonna be willing to murder you too. I, that's just me. Um, so I think, you know, I think there's a lot of cases where people are waking up in jail cells going like, what just happened? You know, and these, these drugs, you know, I've taken it over the years. I've, you know, like when my mom died, they gave me some pills and I just took one and I was like, whoa, you know, I, I've taken acid, LSD, mushrooms. This was like that but weirder and worse and more harmful and, and kind of like at least when you're tripping on a hallucinogenic it's you have kind of a like oh I'm on this ride and it's all good this was like take control of your brain and take it some other place where it wasn't so great and, and uh, very powerful and knowing that they give drugs like that Paxil Prozac to little children is just horribly wrong in my opinion and I think um, I think people should have to, to try those drugs before they give them to kids. Personally, I, I think that's, I know that a lot of people are going to think that's irresponsible, but that's my opinion. I don't think you should ever give a child something mind altering that, that where the kid is too young to really understand like how this is affecting them. I, you know, of course there's cases where a kid is, you know, just so over the top mentally ill, they need help. I'm not arguing that, but it just seems like the norm has become to just dole out the drugs like at the drop of the hat and that's what I'm against.